Okay, this video is going to have a quick overview of using Kodi on a Raspberry Pi. I've got a Raspberry Pi 2 and um, I've downloaded the Open Alec distribution with Kodi in. So different ways of installing Kodi, but easiest way is to get a distribution already made. Um, like I say, I've used Open Alec and that's got version 14.2 of Kodi, which is Helix. Um, the most recent one I think is Isengard, which came out towards the end of July 2015 and Helix came out towards the end of March um, 2015. So it's a few months old, but uh, I imagine it's it's got a lot of the key features. The other distributions that are popular that have Kodi in are um, Xbian is one, and another is OSMC, which I think used to be called Raspbian, but there's a, another couple of um, separate ones. Or alternatively, you can get, get your Raspberry Pi, install an operating system on it, and then just install um, Kodi on its own perhaps some, on something like Rasmian. So there's different ways of going about it, but the easiest way is just get an image. So I've gone to the Open Elec website, and I'll put the link, and I've downloaded their image, written it to the Pi, um, well, the SD card, and it's up and running. So the first time I put that in, it took about two or three minutes to resize the card to make sure I've got all of the available disk space on that card. And then it's gone straight to this screen here. So I haven't really used this before, but I reckon it should be pretty straightforward. So I'll just try and run through and see what the options are. So you can see here, it's just a wizard welcome. Um, it says you can change these settings later by going into the config section. And to begin, press next. So it's, I'm, I'm assuming uh, it's going to detect... Yeah, my um, TV control is detected fine. And when it booted up, it did briefly say in the corner as well that it was updating some plugins. So my Pi's got an internet connection, obviously. It's just um, got a Ethernet cable in, so it's got a connection to both the internet and my internal network, which is where I'm running a Plex server, so it might detect that, see what's happening there. And I've got a separate USB key that I can always plug in and see how it deals with local media. But I'll hit OK for the, the next one there. OK, to be identified on the network, your new open alert needs a name. Uh, try to choose something meaningful. Well, for the minute, I'll keep that default open alert. That's fine. Next. Networking, okay, wired. Um, Show me the the address there, the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it does look very similar to a video I did earlier about Kodi, uh, not Kodi, this is Kodi, about Rasplex, which is a client for um, the Plex server. So I think the main differences between something like the, the way Plex works and something like Kodi is Plex is very much geared for a client server process so the client can be a lot less powerful like the Pi than the actual server needs to be because the server does the um, encoding and the hard work whereas Kodi I think it can get the Pi to do more of the work itself so it's perhaps more a portable solution because you could put local media on a USB stick and it would still play it quite happily um, but I haven't really used either system extensively so I'm sure there's uh, ways around that. Anyway I hit next. Sharing and remote access. OpenLX also supports SSH for remote access. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's also got Samba there. Although it doesn't talk about Samba. Samba's just a quick way that on the Windows computer you can open up a share and drag and drop files. So that's good. I'll keep that enabled. Hit next. Okay, that was it. So uh, it's got there a the lot more info at wiki.kd.tv and I'll put a couple of useful links in the comments section as well or the video description. Um, hit next. That's it. Okay. So it's got a bit of a news ticker down the bottom about looks like releases of Kodi and I've got quite happily the ability to scroll left and right Pic uh, pictures, videos, music, programs and system so I presume if I go into videos now, it's probably pretty empty. Files. Okay, it's got a few tips as well. This tab signifies there's a menu off the side that contains extra options for this section. To access the menu, navigate to the left with your remote control. Okay, and it will not appear again. Okay, useful help. Um, so I can press left. Mm, now... I don't know about the video capture, but my actual TV, it's slightly chopped off the sides. Partly, possibly my TV's fault, or possibly the capture card, because it's a, 
it's a 720p TV but it's not quite, it tries to emulate 1080p but anyway I'm sure it'll fit on your screen even if the screen capture is chopping it off but yeah, on my TV it's uh, skipping some of those so I've got view list at the top sort by name, sort ascending, filter, hide watch, search and update library I don't want those, that's sort of view options I want to add videos I suppose um, what happens if I just choose videos there? not a lot TV shows not a lot. Okay, add videos. Enter the path, the media location. Let's uh, browse. Okay, so I've got a stack of different ways of connecting here. Um, I don't know what a home run device is. Home folder is probably the directory on the SD card, maybe. NFS, so network file system, so maybe I could link back to the PC to get files off that way. Replay TV, not too sure. Read file system, so that's going to be on the SD card itself, so I could copy files over locally. Don't know what an SAP stream is. UPnP is devices that are detected automatically on the local network, so if I went in there, I might see my NAS server that serves. Um, it's got a Plex server on, and it's got the default share for um, media as well, uh, which I've forgotten. The type. Oh, Windows Network, okay, so it could uh, see my PC pretty easily, I'm sure. Let's check out UPnP. There we go, yeah, that's the NAS, and that's um, Plex server I'm running. They're both looking at the same place, it's just different services. Uh, I just can't remember the share service for this, this top one that I'm using. Um, but yeah, it's presenting itself quite happily, so if I put that and say, let's share, and the videos, I want to share... Uh, Let's just have a think. Working. I guess maybe because there's a lot of files under there. Not too sure how long that should take. Now my, my Pi is connected with the Ethernet card, but it's not got the best bandwidth in the world because there's a few hops between that and everything else. Okay, uh, folders go in there. And let's say TV. Uh, how do I select? Browse for new share. Yep, yeah, so I'll go TV and hit OK and add guess I've done that uh, enter a name, ok so I'm sure I could think of a more sensible name but that'll do for the minute ok and now I've got that on the video section, I'll probably go in there choose um, TV episode, press OK press OK on the video The Seven Wonders of the World Christ the Redeemer The Taj Mahal The Great Pyramids That seemed to work pretty well um, It's again still quite happy using my TV remote control Just press stop there Ooh, Stop there and um, it comes back to this menu So playing that was quite happy And that's on a remote NAS on the network um, so it's quite happy doing network play, obviously. Let's try and run something locally. I'll stick this USB stick in and see if anything happens. Okay, I'm not sure if it's going to detect... Oh, here we go, down the bottom, mounted, mounted removable hard drive. So it's seen the disk. Uh, let's check out if I can go files again. USB disk, so I didn't have to do anything to get it to recognise that. Um, and we're going to the MISC, got various miscellaneous films. Now, this is local media, obviously. I don't know if it's going to be any different playing this or just the same. Quite happy. Seems quite happy. Let's try another one. Looks really easy. I mean, to be honest, you could just copy your files that you're after onto um, USB disk, get the SD card with Kodi or OpenELEC on, 
and and put it against ATV and you've got a sort of instant playback of your media so you could take that around somebody's house or if you're going to share the media it's really easy just to give the, the pie and the disc there to somebody they'll be away runs really really well that seems quite good and obviously if you've got a home server like I showed earlier you can connect that to Plex so I'll stop that um, you can see that both methods work pretty well let's have a look um, ok so let's go back again I'm using the return button on my remote let's have a look at video add-ons just see what that does get more, well, I haven't got any so let's try get more and um, where's loads ok so there's no particular order maybe something this could take some time to scroll down them all bestofyoutube.com will that work let's try that, so I press ok uh, install downloading, ok see how big this is ok it looks like it does the youtube one say so this one will work, they've both done that's pretty quick so if I go back there we go, got YouTube and Best of YouTube. So I'll just open YouTube. Execute setup wizard. OK. List, big list, thumbnail. I'll have thumbnail. View episodes, thumbnail. Language and region. No, I'm fine. OK, popular right now, that's what I want. Working. Uh, OK, let's go for some car video, that'll do. Opening stream. Again, I've got a half decent bandwidth on going to the Pi, but it's nothing amazing. There's a load of static on this video, so I'm going to press stop um, and assume that was the video. Let's try something else. Um, World of Warcraft. I'm Draenor. Old rivals sought to bring Azeroth to its knees. And while the Iron Tide was quelled, they were but servants of a more ancient foe that has not forgotten our defiance. The vengeance of the burning shadow. Okay, you see that works pretty well, streaming nicely. Go back here. Again, this is a um, Pi 2. And I don't know if it's overclocked, it's whatever the OpenELEC disk image decides to set the Pi to do. So, um, it's the default, I haven't changed anything. Okay, back here. So that's videos, that's what add-ons does, that's what files does. Same principle for pictures and music, I'm sure. Yeah, you've got the files and add-ons tab. If I go files, do I see... Okay, I don't see the uh, NAS box that I added on video, but that's fine, because that was for video. It still sees the USB disk in case I put music on that. I've uh, got specific music add-ons, so it's really easy to use. Okay, programs, what's in here? Open elect configuration and more programs. Okay, so I guess this is where I could tweak the settings. Yeah. So I've got various settings. Again, this is really similar interface to that Rasplex, um, but Rasplex is doing quite a different job, which is primarily just showing you the end result from the transcoded data on the NAS. So I think they're really for two different jobs maybe. Maybe code is more geared for local media. Saying that, it quite happily showed the NAS. So, I mean, this seems a great way of uh, displaying your media on a, on a TV that maybe is not a smart TV and it can't do it another way. The Raspberry Pi can stream that to it really easily. Um, okay, so I don't need to change anything there. I'll go back and back again. And then I've got a system option. Um, okay, so in the system, I've got quite a few settings. Let's have a look. Settings, uh, appearance, so skins, video, what we've we got here. Loads of little options. Uh, live TV. What's under live TV? Okay, just treatment of how that deals with that. That's pretty powerful. Music. And this is this is pretty um, responsive as well. It's pretty quick. 
like I say, it's not Isengard, it's not the latest version that came out at the end of July. This is um, Helix, which is March. So, you know, I'm tempted to give Isengard a go. It's just that Open Elec don't have a stable image available for download yet. Um, but, like I say, there's other ways to install this. Weather, add ons, services, what services? Okay, UPnP, web server, lots of options. Uh, okay, so back here, op ooh, system, open elect, what's that? Okay, we saw this from the program section. File manager, so that's my disk that I've plugged in and I can put other sources on. Um, and that way, I guess I can actually delete files probably from here. So if I go there and what do I press? OK. Oh, no, that plays it. Stop, stop, stop. Um, what about my info button? No. Uh, I'll worry about that later. I don't know. You can probably, I'm sure you can press delete. Maybe if I um, use the keyboard here. But anyway. OK, back out of here. Uh, that's file manager profiles. Is that for different users? Yeah, I think this, I could create um, different users so they get different views. That's uh, a lot more flexible as well. Um, all in all, a pretty fast, responsive system that gets media up and running really quickly. And it'd be ideal where your TV, you haven't got a smart TV, or you want to get um, get the media um, portable, so you can just put your local USB disc in it. It'd probably do a powered um, external drive on the Pi as well, but obviously that's more cables and plugs. Uh, system info. Okay, it's just telling me what IP it's on, and um, that I'm on a 1080 resolution, which is kind of weird because my TV isn't bad anyway. Ignore that. Um, uptime 40 minutes. Battery level. Okay. Oh, and the CPU usage down the bottom. That's quite good. And you can just confirm so I'm on KD 14.2 at the bottom there, which, um, yeah, end of March came out. Uh, network, video, hardware, that's just going to be the hardware of the Pi 2, basically. And yeah, so that's it. That was really easy to get up and running. I could always show you the um, install process, but basically it's download a file from OpenELEC, open the compressed file, and it's got a .img file in it, write it to the SD card with Win32 Disk Imager and it does this. Like, do wait a couple of minutes the first time you do it though because it expands the file system and then it'll reboot into this. Um, anyway, wait, I, I think that's a great um, great application. I might start using it a bit more. And down the bottom there, I imagine I can turn it off here. But before I do, I'm just going to quickly check my Windows computer for uh, what's what it's seen on the network in case there's something um, quick and easy that I can copy across. Uh, let's just have a quick look. Two seconds while should you look at that screen. Um, where are we? Network. Okay, so I'm having a really quick look and there's nothing obvious on there, but that might just be because I haven't pressed the right button, so um, I won't worry about that. But as we've seen, lots of ways to get media there, whether it's local or remote and um, plays really well. So I'll press that button there and power off system. Brilliant. Uh, any questions, put them in the comments and I'll help if I can.